In 2020, Month of the Mad God celebrated the first full release of the Exalt client. Many features, like Exaltations and Vital Combat, were released during this event. Its title of Reconstruction, however, referred to the full reworks of the artwork, minions, and bosses of many dungeons in the game. Many more dungeons have been reconstructed after the event ended as well. The following is a full list of the dungeons that have been fully reconstructed. I'm not going to give a full walkthrough of all the reconstructed dungeons because this video will get really long really fast, but I will give a quick rundown of the things you need to know. First up, Pirate Cave. One of the main goals of Reconstruction was to bring the artwork of old dungeons up to current standards, and I think what they did with Pirate Cave is a great example of that. The fight is actually pretty interesting too if you're a level 1 with T0 gear. Any level 20 should just melt it though. Continuing with the beginner dungeons, we have the Spider Den. There's still the eggs that spawn spiders, there's now a web that slows you, and there's treasure chests that can drop a lot of healing ikers if you need to stock up on them. Being a beginner dungeon, the boss fight still shouldn't present much of a challenge. Now we'll move on to Godlands dungeons, starting with the Snake Pit. Snake Pit is probably the least changed of any of the reconstructed dungeons, with the primary difference being the cosmetics. It's actually even easier to rush now because instead of the rooms with the big snakes that used to be a little scary at low defense, there's now just a single large snake that throws an AoE. The later phases of the boss are a little different than before too, but you'll rarely go past the first phase if you're on a level 20 character. Not much has changed with getting to boss in Sprite World. The artwork, especially on the moving tiles, is much more polished and makes it much more clear what's going on. There are more of the larger sprites in various colors, but none of them are scary to run past, and you can still TP across the gaps if you're on a trickster or a rogue with Planewalker. The main changes come with the boss fight. I always was annoyed with the old sprite world when you'd go into the dungeon and the boss would already be dead. To keep this from happening, Decca added two short and vulnerability phases, one when the boss is at two-thirds HP, and another when the boss is at one-third HP. The first phase and third phase of the boss will be the same every time. With the second phase, however, the boss will choose a random color and do different attacks based on which color it chooses. Make sure to watch out for the shotgun during the final phase. It's still possible to insta the boss, but it's much less common, which generally gives you a few extra seconds to TP. We'll see changes of similar nature in the Abyss and UDL fights next. In the Abyss clear, the rooms are much larger and there are hallways in between the rooms, which makes it a lot easier to rush on the classes other than Knight. There are also lots of new minions which have been added. Most of them don't really do that much different, but there is one that throws hammers that expose you, which causes you to take more damage from everything else. It's also worth noting that the lava does more damage now than in the old abyss, and there are also white demons that spawn throughout the dungeon in addition to in the boss room. The boss does something similar to Sprite World, where it goes through three phases with short and vulnerability in between. In the first phase, he slowly chases, and then after short and vulnerability phase, he starts rotating around with one of two possible shot patterns. One of them is a targeted shotgun that can be deadly. If you don't DPS him quick enough, he'll alternate between phases during this time. In the final phase, the boss goes back to slowly chasing, once again with two possible shot patterns. Both of them are periodic shotguns, but one of them also includes a ring of armor break that you should avoid if you like your character. The UDL clear features many of the same enemies that were in the original one. Slimes, vampires that slow in silence, constructs, etc. The traps are still present as well, but they now have a brief delay when activating them, so you don't have to worry as much about getting popped by one. The main new enemy to worry about is the living skeleton. It resembles a pile of bones on the floor until players are nearby, at which point it stands up and shoots a targeted shotgun that deals nearly 900 damage at zero defense. Never AFK in a UDL now, or you're asking for one of these to come get you. Just like in Sprite and Abyss, the boss will go through three phases. When you first get into the boss room, Subtavius is invulnerable until you kill his army of minions circling the room. Once you kill them and damage him down to two-thirds HP, he'll go invulnerable and come back with a shotgun, and then after the last short invulnerability phase, he'll spawn more minions, which once again must be killed in order to damage him. Before Reconstruction, Toxic Sewers was arguably the hardest Godlands dungeon to rush due to the Sicken Sludge being unavoidable if you weren't on Rogue or Trickster, and the prevalence of quiet shots. After the rework, however, rushing is much easier. The hallways are wider, giving you more room to dodge, 
There are bridges to cross the sludge most of the time when you need to, and the sicken disappears much more quickly after leaving the sludge. One additional complication with rushing is the flowing sludge, which functions similar to the moving tiles in Sprite World. The reconstructed sewer still has a chance of spawning the golden rat, but it also has a chance of spawning an additional tea room with master rat. When you defeat master rat, a pizza box will spawn in the middle of the room that has a chance of dropping power pizza. The first phase of the boss fight is pretty similar to the old sewers, except without the armor break stars. As you progress, the boss also still splits into multiple smaller clones of itself, initially into two with one on each side, and then to four rotating in the middle. Once you've killed all four of the mini bosses, he goes into a rage phase similar to the old sewers, except that now he can be stunned. That's it for the Godlands dungeons that have been reconstructed. In part two of this video, we'll go into the epic dungeons, W-Lab, C-Depths, and D-Docs.